July 6th, 2020, the Verona Select Board regular scheduled meeting to order. Uh, to my left is Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith, I'm Brad Town, um, Dana Hadley, our town administrator, is here, and with a red mask, <laughs> and uh, Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? I have no changes. Or again. Public comment. Hearing none. Uh, Treasury report, I right have. Okay. I have, I always, I ask you a couple times a year uh, to update um, payments that are under $5 uh, that people eat, and usually like 20 cents or 50 cents or something like that. Uh, right now I've got 20 of them, and they total $15.21. So I don't know if I can get an approval so that I can take them. There's 20 of them, and most of them are like 50 cents, or a lot of them are 15. What did you say, Diane? 15, 20? 15, 20. 15, 20. For 20. 21, right? 15, 21. Yeah. 15, 21. Okay. 21. Okay. 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 So, we'll move to uh, debate the uh, $15.21 total on cost of property taxes. I second the motion. Any further discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Diane. Okay, the other thing that I have is uh, at the next meeting, I'm going to be uh, bringing paperwork uh, from the bank because the um, project for um, the tank paint turnpike sewer is going to be starting soon. So we had that loan that we can, you know, like a quote called the bridge loan, um, for interim financing. So, because on that project it's 2.2 million. So, um, anyways, I can get the paperwork for that, and then it has to be signed here. Now, we had approved back in February that we go through Community Bank NA at a rate of 1.85 percent. Well, the bank has called me, and they've reduced the rate to 1.6 percent. Yeah, that is like a savings of 5,500 dollars. That's interest excellent for that one year. So, at any rate, I will have that paperwork for the next meeting, and we can approve and sign at that point. But I want to make you aware. Great news. Thank yeah, you. Good news. Okay, that's all I've got. Anything else I have is in the agenda. Uh, tax rate calculation? We have the um, paperwork that I gave you, the worksheet on the tax rate calculation. Um, this is showing not using any <coughs> of the fund balance. The municipal rate would be 6162 per hundred. Last year it was 50. So uh, this obviously is, is a mathematical equation, uh, what the amount of the budget voted on town meeting day, the amount of articles that were voted, the amount that was voted for the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department um, is a total budget of $3,628,646. Estimated budget revenues, which again, um, we try to go on the conservative side, two seventy. dollars $270,050. Pilot payments is the same situation, $185,000. We have not received any sort of notice that we would not be receiving that. The state current use, $40,000. So we have revenues, $495,50. Uh, which leaves the amount to be raised by taxes of $3,133,596. The grand list is um, well, it's actually five hundred eight million five hundred nineteen thousand eight hundred. Uh, so that gives us hundreds of five hundred fifty thousand um, five hundred eight thousand. Sorry, five million eighty five one ninety eight. I have trouble with that. Uh, which makes the municipal rate six one six two. Um, the bottom shows you how much of each budget is affected in the tax rate and also um, for each 50,800 used from fund balance it would reduce the tax rate by a penny. We have fund balance Diane. 
of 603,700, of which I always like to have that $500,000 mark, but we do have $603,700, and that was on the audit report from FY19. So if we were using extra 100,000, it would reduce it to 60.62? It would be 59, two cents for the 100,000. Or 100, actually, that would be 101,600, I guess. Yeah, and uh, 100, yeah, 101,600. We originally discussed this when we were doing the budget, right? About 100,000. So, yeah. But I was just wondering um, so a penny is about 50,000? 50, 50,800 represents a penny. And what was the. Um, what was uh, the last last, last year? year was 56.64.5664 was the municipal rate. So you're looking at what three and a half cents increase? If you went with the um, using 101,000, yes. Your rate would be 59.62. Six out of fund balance. Yeah. I'm going to use uh, 101,600 from the fund balance to reduce the uh, tax rate by two, approximately two cents. I second the motion. Any further discussion? So, with this induction or um, Tax rate as it is. What was the total increase in, in revenue? I mean, not revenue, but uh, taxes collected to meet the uh, budget. What do you mean for the last time, or I'm not? For this, for the for what we're voting on right now, what, what would be the total amount that we're raising through taxes? Three million. Yeah, three million and thirty-one thousand. Yeah, three million one thirty-three five ninety-six. Um, and so you're asking what last year's was? Yeah. Um, and before I answer... Roughly you, about two cents. <laughs> any, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it was probably about three million fifty thousand, something yeah. like that. I, don't, I like seem I to remember go, it was just a little over three million. I can go... Um, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't bring that with me, but I could get it really quickly. There's more just for information. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, and I believe the tax collector is planning to prepare bills this week. We're hoping we can do our project. I don't have the school tax rate, school rate yet. Oh, okay. um, I've talked to Jill Remett, and she was working on it last Thursday and thought she'd have it done. So if she doesn't have it done by this week, as soon as you know, as soon as yes. she has it done. And I can, you know, make arrangements with the assessors. We'll get together for the tax bills out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else on that? Sorry. That's uh, um, from Milton Cat. I was expecting Tim Davis to be here. Um, I'm wondering if we could just postpone this for a few minutes sure. in the event that he might um, come. Letter received from the Berlin Conservation Committee. I did receive a letter from the Conservation Commission, um, and they are asking about having the bridge repaired due to public safety concerns. And then I think they've addressed, they appreciate um, that the bridge, um, how, what did they say? Oh, they talked about, I guess, we had talked about one time that perhaps the Snowmobile Club might be willing to. Yeah. lend a hand, which I think they are, um, but the issue is that they don't have a way to get there. And so, um, and I think that the Conservation Board Commission feels that this is something that needs, they can't wait to be repaired. 
I think they, when I talked to, talk to them, they were concerned about making it wide enough for snowmobile access um, because it would then allow access for, you know, you'd have to have a need or something. Was their biggest reason when I talked to Tom Willard. Mm -hmm. um, so they were concerned if you had to have a gate or a chain or a barway of some sort, then you know, somebody might cut the lock and drive up there with vehicles. Um, there is something in their bylaws or not bylaws or their whatever the land yep. that says they should partner with associations for snowmobile travel and all that. But I don't know much about it. I just know they. This repeater, if I recall, is forty five hundred dollars. Well, I'm just thinking if they repair the bridge, that gives them breathing room to work something out with the snowmobile club or whoever. If they want a bigger and better bridge, but at the same time, it will fix the problem we have now and allow us to uh, keep the trail open. Right, they were going to build the same size. They were going to leave it the same size, so I would just be concerned that even if they don't do anything with the bass or any of that, there would be that. I think it would be good for us to have, if we're going to build something, have access for the tractor. You know, that was my only, that was my biggest thing. I mean, if, if, but wouldn't we have access? I mean, they could move some of the, the boulders. No. Nope. No? No, the bridge is four feet wide. Oh, I thought you meant getting up on the trail to fix the bridge. You mean get over the bridge? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, up on yeah. the uh, other side of the trail. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. Four feet. That'll, that's good for hikers and whatnot, but any other camp? No side by sides. You can do a single wide snowmobile or ATV, but. The only thing I was thinking is, is that emergency access. That's a good point, too. <clears throat> you get somebody climb top there that gets stung by a bee or whatever. You know, lots of things can happen. Heart attack to earth. Yeah, I would think that that's a good point. I don't think about it like that either. Yeah. Just thinking more makes sense. Yeah, I mean, when we, Josh and I went up and put plywood, you know, I had some uh, tiny glue that I had on my pool room floor when I covered it. And, uh, like, I just moved those boulders and the grapple on the tractor yeah. and I put them back in place. It was easier not there, but, um, yeah. So, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know, ultimately, if we can encourage them to build it or, at least the width of the side by side, I would think. Well, I would, I would think the thing to do would be to have the, uh, still have them partner with the uh, Sylvia or the ATV people and work something out so that the bridge can be a little wider than it is and you know, make it so emergency vehicles can get up there of some sort. It doesn't have to be a truck. But. And that's the, most of the, I think a lot of the, the fire department uses side by sides now, so it should, yeah. Yeah. So how do we make that recommendation? Just asking to recommend that bill. So you approve the use of them building the bridge. They've been using the funds already. So I guess it's more of an encouragement, right? Well, the other thing to do is be look into their the bylaws as far as the uh, partnering with the uh, clubs. Also, I'm sure the language isn't they must. But it's probably they. Can. Yeah, there was. I, I, there, they were. They were. It was like encouraged at a minimum, is what I heard. You know. Yep. Well, I that, would. I would think just taking uh, kind of a motion to uh, encourage them to the commission to uh, see what the uh, snowmobile people or the ATV people would be willing to do. Right. Well, I thought we were going to have a meeting on that, and I mean, that was what I thought we were going to end up ultimately having. This is uh, last month there, and I'd spoken with Bass 
and they were like pretty gung ho about working with them. Um, yeah. Using just local resources, not vast funding, but local resources and labor. So, yeah. um, I mean, yeah, I've never been up on that trail, but the the bridge is. Um, what are they using for abutments? Uh, they're concrete, I believe. Poured or block? Or uh, let me see. I, well, we got some pictures of it. <laughs> Oh, you're saying those blocks would be easy to add to it? Well, I think their concern was well, some of it was the aesthetics of it. Um, you know, if you put in big steel, mm -hmm. you're going to be having to do new embutments, and it's going to look, you know, it's just going to, that's from what I understood, some of their concern. I know I've got pictures here. Um, story. Um. <coughs> well, if, I mean, if, if it's a poured cement, then the only way they're going to get anything wider is to take in, uh, is to have overhang on the beams that are there. I did not get any good pictures, pictures of the embutments. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I mean, I would think they could, I don't know what you need for embutments either. You know, there's, I know that I talked to this Steve Coro, he's the, he is with Bass, he's the trail master for Northfield, and he had steel I beams that we could have. Yeah. Um, and then somebody else had some, and they thought those for that bridge might be good for them. Like there's, there was a thing, you know, there was a lot of resources available. So, I uh, would just make the motion that we encourage the conservation board to speak with VAST and emergency services, um, specifically emergency services, um, and see what they would use for a rescue vehicle to get up there and try to accommodate. Second that motion. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Davis. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Mr. Davis is in to talk to you about a subject that you've heard before about the road grader. And uh, do you need any other speech? We did receive the cement uh, mill and you have the stuff from North Carolina. Yes, I do, and I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. And maybe if you explain, you can explain what what we have here. here just, oh. Yeah, that, and that doesn't include, there's a few items that were missed, I believe, from what I was told on the quote from Milton, and then, so that's probably roughly what it would be, but maybe a little bit more depending on what they find. Well, I was looking through here, I don't see the tires. Yeah, the tires aren't on there, so that's nine to 10,000 somewhere in that ballpark and then um, they did that oil sample came back with heavy copper deposits in it yeah, and the they second one or the no they're not it hasn't had enough hours for the second one yet so they said that it was either 
it very well could be just a bearing material. Like yeah, you'd copper. Think, you'd think some of the other metals would show high too. Yeah, and then they said there's a there's a chance in there that it could be um, the copper from the inside of the radiator. But they said at that point that's all been that all that material has run through them bearings and valves and motor all the motor parts as well. So. I know there was a quote that if the motor had to be replaced, it was about the same as what was here, so... He told me that um, the engine wouldn't... They'd have to use a lot of components that well, are already on the... Originally, originally, when Milton was talked to, they said that they wouldn't rebuild the motor. They would put a reman in it and then send that motor back. So the turnaround was a little bit faster. Well, unfortunately, those are not available. So it would be a, just a block swap. They put a block in it, and then the heads. I mean, if if they were good, the heads would go on the new motor or the new block. All the fuel rails, wiring. So then it's more labor intensive. So the price would probably go up somewhere in there. But I know they were talking right around forty to. 45,000 I'm just in I mean there was nothing put on paper for the motor so if if everything was it's close to 90 95,000 that that thing's gonna need if that second motor or that oil sample comes back yeah. where the motor needs to be worked on you know what I mean and then you're taking you're taking a brand new power plant and putting it behind a 13 year old transmission with, yeah. what is it, it's a little 65, 6,500 hours on it. Yeah. And then I got a quote, John Deere came down and looked at the grader and gave a quote and the trade-in is close to what the maintenance is on that first original bill, not including the tires. 50 small tiles? Mm, 40. Yeah, I did. Is it 45, something like that? Because they have, so there's two in here. There's one for a quote for a grader that they just got. They just had one delivered to Springfield last Thursday. There's one quote that if to purchase that one, and there's another quote whether you would buy, um, they would build one and we'd order it. But the uh, trade in for that one is 44000 And you know, what was the quote for the greater guy in Springfield? It's the same. It's, it's the same dealer. It's just they give in the same. I don't know what the dollar number. Yeah, what's the total cost? The total cost between a thousand dollars. One's two seventy eight five hundred, and the other one's two seventy nine five hundred. Of which they would give you forty four thousand for the old one. No, that's after the trade in for forty four thousand. The grand total okay. without trade in is three twenty three okay. fifty. Okay. So we're looking at two hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, roughly after trade in. Or if they take and do the motor block and everything, you'll be a hundred thousand dollar repair. Yeah, on a thirteen year old grader. <laughs> How much of this is there's also I haven't really ever done much in this, but there's a, there's also they do leases, but I'm not sure what the end interest. Yeah. Yeah. So Pam, um, they do 60, 60, 72, and an 82. Knowing that the grader is a very important piece of equipment. Yeah, it's, we understand. That. It's pretty much the um, heart and soul of the. How? Um, and, and I know that you don't have a crystal ball in front of you, but what do you think about the old grader making it another year? Um, if we put hundred thousand dollars into it. I mean I hope it would last more than a year, but um, 
But again, you know what I mean? You, I understand. you yeah, put it into it, and then next year the transmission goes. Right. I've had cars like that. I get it. Yeah. yeah. So is this the, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's obviously functional now, right? Yes. It is leaking oil now, though, I've noticed. Motor oil is coming from somewhere on the front of the motor. Yeah. It's starting to leave puddles. So. And it's got to, without any repairs, like the one of the front motors is making you know, noises and carrying on and it spins faster than the other motor so that's it's balding one tire faster than the others and so how much of this 41,000 is necessary to keep the thing running all of that by the sounds of it the mold board's in bad bad shape it, it shucks back and forth and it moves side to side inches and when you're trying to lay a road out Right, so that's Even that, you know, I mean, that's just making washboards. That's ten thousand of the repair. on the other side and it's seems to be all right and we're in a situation where we're trying not to spend a lot of extra money this yeah year, so i don't think we're in a good position to honestly no it's it's a hard decision it's a lot of money but the other thing is is if it breaks but I'm understanding is when it's broke before in the past, we were able to get at least wreck one, right? But yeah, the well, Reynolds. Du Bois had one. They the sold it. Yeah, they got rid of it. Rental on them is, I think, five, five to eight thousand a month, depending on the hours that you yeah. I'm say this that right. you ask yeah. for leasing it, and then downtime in between, and then it's whether they even have one. Right now, the only one that's in the state of Vermont that's available through John Deere is the one they just picked up last Thursday in Springfield, and I mean they're they're trying to sell it. So yeah. if, it, <laughs> if it sold next week, they wouldn't have one available, and I don't know what Milton has available. I was saying with what Caterpillar had. Doesn't you know? What I mean, it, it's one of those things that just there's not like a lot of them sitting on a lot. They well, might keep the one around. You know what I mean? They only sell maybe one or two of them a year. Yeah. Yeah, I think we would definitely need, we should put this out for an RFP. Oh, I have to. Right. Most and, definitely. And well, now we have an idea of what it's going to cost. Now let's uh, get a little bit of idea of what the. Uh, cost of a new one is. We got one price, but that's not both prices. What's yeah. The, what's the warranty on the John Deere? I just barely got these Thursday morning. He dropped them off. Extended warranty. So it's probably more than likely it's a year. Is this pretty much what they all come with and then there's an extended in here service agreement 60 months to 3,000 hours so that's probably on top of a 
five years. Yeah. We have 6,800 hours on my trader now. We'll go the fall to 60 months, most likely. And that's what, 2007? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's 13 years old. Right. Right. And I think you bought that used, didn't you? Yes, it was yes. the least. It was the least greater when they bought it. Yeah. And without probably really rolling back to that year, I don't know what it. Who do nobody we have knew to what buy it came from besides uh, Milton Cat and John Deere. Is there anyone else? Uh, Volvo offers one. I don't see too many of them around. I know, just wondering if they discontinued them and we have it. I know they're pricey. Yeah. Yeah. And not very many towns. Pretty much these two are where it's at as far as people buying graders. Mm -hmm. Plus um, serviceability. Yeah. Parts availability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, CR Woods. I don't think I've ever seen one on their lot. What's that? The grader up. The well, CR Woods is in just right next to North Tracks. But they're mainly crane and excavators out of there. We had a grader in there some time ago. It was a big ball hole. Yeah. Well, Dan, why don't we take in, uh, you want to uh, ask Milton what they could do. Okay. So, do we need a formal RFP if we only have two? I think we'd better do it that way. Just mm -hmm. So I can do a formal RFP? Um, do you want me to use the description of what they described there as far as equipment, etc.? Well, what Something called the whole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, probably I have a motion on this. I would also incur, I, I also think we should probably have, uh, like I would, are you going to, how are you, I guess it will depend on the motion. But, um, you're going to make it, so. <laughs> yeah, you can decide. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just trying to think how to word it so that, because I wouldn't, I think it would be a good idea to see if anybody has, how, like, how we purchased that one, not necessarily new, but an off lease. Or, uh, I know that topic was brought up last week. And, um, Jeff Newton still stays pretty tight with the equipment dealers, you know what I mean? He, yeah. He looks at a bunch of used stuff as well as anybody. Um, he said there's not a lot out on the market, but there's a few, but they're from out west. And it seemed to be that they're high hours on them. Yeah. Well, Low in years, but higher hours. They use them more f for winter maintenance out there. But, you know what I mean? You, you always can find, you never know what you're going to find. But the option is there. It's just we can always word your motion uh, 400 hours or less. Yep. So I would move that we put an RFP out for a new grader or a grader with 400 hours or less. And I second that motion. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Thanks for all your efforts and research. Thank you. Yeah. Playing in the dirt. It's been a blast. <laughs> Had a lot of fun the last two weeks. Are you going to hang on to that? Do you want me? To I can. That? Yeah. Um, a bad habit, and then I'll give it back to you after I'm done. Yeah. yeah. The two weeks have gone by fast. They have. They've gone by very fast, actually. Thank you. Okay, Tim. Anything else? Um, did you want to talk about that pickup? Or? Oh, uh, why don't we do that? Uh, Tim asked me about, at one point, the highway superintendent used to take the pickup home. Uh, he lived in Berlin. That was um, Tate. And um, Tim Davis um, didn't take the pickup home because he lived in Marshfield. So uh, Tim Davis has asked me about the pickup. So I guess I'm looking for some advice from the board on that. Seeing what everybody's feelings are. Well, personally, I feel the pickup is 
whoever's on call should have they should have access to the pickup, be it chainsaws or whatever else that they can cut down a, a cut a down a tree or anything like that. Yeah, like I told Dana though, like I wouldn't unless I was completely gone out of town. If I was gone out of town, the truck would be here. But otherwise, I would be with. There's, I don't know. It's always been a kind of a pet peeve of mine. It's nice to have two people, one for safety reasons for cutting trees up because you never know what you're gonna end up dealing with. But that's uh, what you're saying. You'd be on call all the time. I, yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? I I so would. By having the truck, you're saying that you wouldn't have to come here. Yeah. To get the truck. Um, you've got your basic equipment in the truck, such as saws and things mm -hmm. like that. Do you live up by, uh... Or by Andrew. Up by Andrew. Yeah. Or is that... You can go for a It's Bean Road that I'm on, but yeah, Union Brook. Yeah. How's Union Brook Road? Oh, just great. <laughs> <laughs> I think before we make a decision like that, we should probably have all of us here. All members to weigh in. I would think so. That's fine. It's just more. It was a question that I didn't ask before. Okay, so we'll put that for next time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, that's fine. Is there anything else? Not that I can think of. I, everything's been great. And going smooth so far. So. Good. Um, so your sand piles getting up? No, they haven't started sand yet. That's gravel. Yeah, it's the. What the, they've been doing an inch and a half last week. The other pile that's closest to the gate is done, completed. What's going on there by the uh, state library? That's just uh, their do ways to get ready for that sewer project and then using Wayne's yep. as a yard, I guess. I think they're staying in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how late that's going to run. I assume they'll be done by October. I hope. And they just put a, I patch mean, they hit, up. They had a one lane road through there. They were putting in some receiver of some sort. Hmm. Concrete receiver. Mm -hmm. Because that's going from. That starts uh, Wednesday, I believe. And I'm going from it Maple is Woods. pushed back by, you know, so we might get into, we'd like to see it finished this year, but who knows, we may not see that. Yeah. Okay, anything else, Tim? I don't believe so, unless you guys got any questions or... Not that I think so. Okay. Um, I know nothing Black Road. That's got to be done before November, I was told. Right, we'll, we'll need to talk about Black Road. I haven't approached that with you, we're trying to let you get... No, okay. <laughs> ...your feet wet, but... Yeah, you know. no, so... But yes. Some. We obviously don't have extra time right now, I'm guessing. Or I don't know if we're bringing it up because we're trying to schedule and figure it out. No, but I just was told that it had to be completed before snow. So I didn't know if there was some sort of deadline that I was up against with it. I think that's a great deadline before snow. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That, yeah. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I just. I mean, I think you have a little bit of time, so. Yeah. I mean, if you find that you have a lot of time, um, I don't think you're going to find that right away. Um, no. But if you do, um, you know things have to happen with Black Road. Yeah. So, just want to make sure that we get it done and completed. And um, I think you you did a job down on Junction Road yeah. um, with some drainage, and the guys did a very nice job. Um, congratulations. They were I they think, were very happy with it yes, when we left. I think we've gotten a lot of compliments on that. Um, just got to find grass seed now. <laughs> you know. That seems to be the hot commodity now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> grass seed, well, with, in this, with the state, uh, are they putting vibratory rollers behind the graders now? No. The state's not doing anything. I've seen a few towns that have gone out and done it. They're very expensive. Yeah. How's it working, though? Town of Brookfield has one. Um, 
it seems to work all right, but it almost kind of defeats the purpose when you're chloriding too. They don't chloride as much as other, I don't even know if they do do liquid chloride. So they try to compact it to keep the dust down. Keep the dust down. But like here with the liquid chloride, it's nice to have a little bit of open dirt because it actually rolls in and it smooths out. Yeah, it's got something to bind to. Yeah. But I just want to, I'd heard that, uh, that some towns are starting in with a vibratory roller. Yeah, I know they're very, I don't know what they cost. But I've just been told that they're very expensive. Well, I think the bigger, well, well, I think some of the expense is putting a pump on the grater that will run the hydraulic motor on the roller. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're asking a, at that point, you know what I mean, you're asking a lot, and I'm sure at that, you know what I mean, you're going to be burning more fuel, yeah. trying to run more hydraulics. It, you know I mean, there's a lot of hydraulics on the grader. Yeah. So, huh. I don't know what the cost. Who's been doing the grader? Uh, Timmy's been doing a little bit at the end of last week, and then he was on vacation for one day. That he had most of the last week off for um, some septic issues. He had to put a new tank in his house, so it's just been the three of us. So we've been. He was actually up at the end of the week was piling gravel when they were bringing it, so they could push it up. So I'm hoping, weather permitting, tomorrow to start doing some grading. Cross downs getting rough. A lot of the roads, and that. We're going to get the hours on that to get that second sample probably pretty quick. We took a quick ride Thursday late in the afternoon. We had about an hour left. I hadn't looked at some of the shorter roads over in Riverton area. And they're getting, we've had enough rain in the last couple of weeks. So either they're getting very potholy, washboardy, or the water's jumped out and channeled them. So. I'm going to get quite a bit of grading in here right off. How bad is the oil leak in the engine? It was sitting over at the fuel pump the other day and it left a puddle. Yeah. Just started. So I'm, I'm hoping. I just wonder if that copper was uh, part of an oil cooler or something. That was no, it's on the that. front, so I'm not sure exactly where it's when you coming say from. from. Are you being the. the Rear of the grader or the, well, the transmission? Right up by the transmission, right behind the cab, on the front of the cowling, somewhere yeah. right between the cab and, and the articulation. Yeah. The rear of it yeah. seems to be all right where the oil coolers and radiators would be. But. So, I wanted to ask too actually about have you implemented any new systems like log books with equipment or anything like that? I haven't yet because I just barely got into the they just went through their hours. I'm going to try to start doing a weekly, keeping track of hours on a weekly basis and see how that goes. Right now it's once a month. At the, at the end of every month, all the hours get taken down and I just entered them all into the computer the other day. Okay. So. All the equipment has Hobbs meters on them? Uh, I don't know. TJ is the one that normally takes the hours down. I can ask. Yeah. But they all have the uh, hour meter level. Yes. Everything has an hour meter. Most of the stuff now is all digital anyways. It's not like, like yes, graders all right in the cluster. Cluster and the graders on the dash. They don't even well even the loaders know enough now that it's in the cluster, so yeah. yeah. All the then the trucks get hours and mileage. So, any more questions for Tim? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Tim. All right. See you guys later. Have a good night. Have you a great too. Night. Thanks. Okay. A letter received from Vermont League of Season Towns. This is the letter that the league sends every year, um, asking if anyone would like to be nominated or if you have any ideas of who to nominate to the um, VLCT board. And that is for their um, meeting. They'd like it if you had someone by Friday the 17th. Who's that? 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 Who
Who did the last year? Um, you you didn't nominate anyone last year. This was this was not for the representation at the meeting. This was this was for the board itself. Did you like to be nominated? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a yes. <laughs> Thanks for thinking of me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so we need to take and figure out who wants to do this. So actually, this this one is not. You don't no. need to do any action on this. This is just the soliciting for if if there was someone here that wanted to be on the board and they were asking you to nominate them, that's where you would come in. That's true. I don't hear anyone asking. You. Bid opening for roadside mowing there? We received one bid. And maybe close. Okay. To open it. So we have one bid. It was received here July 8th at 9 a.m. It should be the 6th, yeah. Hmm? It should be the 6th, I hope. Oh, okay. It looks like an 8, but yes. Yeah, six. yeah. <laughs> out of Williamstown and I'll read it. Dear Sir, I'm ready to submit a bid for the 2020 roadside mowing season. The proposed bid for single pass mowing of all class two and three roads is $5,000. A second pass on paved roads would add $400 to the bid proposal. The mowing in question is scheduled to be performed using a John Deere 2555 90 horsepower tractor equipped with a five foot boom back mower. I would assume as with other towns, a 30-day contract term from acceptance of bid. I would like to thank you for your time and consideration of my bid proposal. So it's $5,000 for first pass and $400 for a second pass on paved roads. Do we have an insurance requirement on that, Dana? Yes, we do. And and he knows. I mean, if, if he were to get that, he would provide it. John L. did it for us last year. And it's signed by Donnell Dexter. Your motion? I make a motion to accept the bid from Donnell Dexter as outlined in the representation just read. Second. Any further discussion? On that bid data, um, what do we appropriate? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. That was pretty much the same price you got last year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to take and see. You want to spend more money than that? I just couldn't remember what the... Yeah. Uh, what the... Uh, what the uh, I guess the second pass would depend on what the road would depend on itself. The trouble with a lot of these roads is one pass, four feet, gets you down to the bottom of the ditch, and there's not much on the other side you gotta really reach out to. Mm -hmm. So um, approval some board minutes from uh, June 15th, 2020. I make the motion to approve the Monday, June 15, 2020 select board minutes. That's Second. presented. Second. Thank uh, you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Town Administrator's report, then. Yes, I had um, typed in my report, um, kind of updating you on different projects, but I did want to point out that today I received an updated memo from the consultant for the um, town center designation that I'd like to give to you. Um, prior, I, I sent you.
do one in the packet, and this is an updated one. And we have scheduled a meeting for the 22nd um, of July to be held over at the Grain Hall, Capital City Grain. Um, and the consultant will update you on some changes, because there have been several changes. So that was the, the latest thing. Other than that, um, uh, I've been working on project bids, um, the paving, which will be open at the next meeting, and see what we got for pricing on the Lover's Lane Bridge, as well as the wall in the clerk's office. Um, I tried to bring you up to date on stormwater projects. Um, we have a stormwater project here at the town office on the town campus, and we have the um, design what has been done for a year and a half or so. And now we've also received a grant for 100%, well, not quite, of the um, cost to construct the stormwater ponds and strips as outlined in the, in the plan. Um, this is a grant that's handled through the Regional Planning Commission. Um, the grant is about $60,000 total. The required match from the town is $980, and we can use in-kind services, one of those my services that I would use, or if they get any assistance from the highway department. Um, and that is um, what I have. I still have the uh, town road policy, which I've had a struggle with, but I am trying to incorporate things from other towns to see where we come, and I, I eventually would like to see that done. <coughs> and that's all I had for my report. Some liquor licenses to I have I have a liquor license renewal application. Um, normally these are due by the end, I think end of April. Um, however, due to the COVID situation, um, it was extended. So I need the liquor board to convene. Yeah. Bags that go to board meeting and convene liquor board meeting. I second the motion. Any more discussion? All those favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are now the Liquor Commission. So this is an application from the um, Twin City Bowling, um, Twin City Lane, 708 U.S. Route 302. Uh, they are applying for a class one, a first class and third class license. And I always wonder about that. And I thought you might ask me. So I <laughs> looked it up. <laughs> and so, one's hard, one's what is that? <laughs> one's hard, what your one is. Um, and basically, a first class license allows an establishment to serve beer and wine. And establishments that intend to serve spirits must also apply for a third class license. And both first and third have to be approved by the locality before application can be made to liquor control. And um, that's why have a first and third class and this is for this is at the they have a restaurant at the bowling so is this is this the only one that's come in this is this is the only one that we had that had not renewed before the due date so because Twin City was closed for oh, to approve the liquor license application for Twin City Lines I second the motion any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. Motion carries. And I have four of those you know, signing on the left. All of the left, okay. About a third down the page, you'll see it approved on the mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Motion to read the select board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Motion. motion to uh, exit the clear board and read the select board. I second the motion. 
Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. We are now the select board once again. Anything in per, uh, executive session, Dan? Um, I do have an executive session, but I do need you to approve the licenses, permits, vouchers um, for the warning. Make the motion to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 20G24 with checks 2229 to 2346 in the amount of 59,322.22. Also, payroll warrant 20-26 for payroll from June 7th, 2020 to June 20th, 2020, paid on June 24th, 2020 in the amount of $38,398.15. And payroll warrant 21-01 for payroll from June 21, 2020 to July 4, 2020, paid on July 8, 2020 in the amount of $49,639.63. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Roundtable, Justin? Nope.